and welcome to the Evolve with Emily Show YouTube channel. The best way to support the show on this YouTube channel is to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and or share it with a friend. I hope that you guys enjoy this episode in whichever way you choose to support the show. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. I hope that today's message and episode brings some bit of positive change to your life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Evolve with Emily podcast. I am your host, Emily Hayden, and today I have two guests joining us. It is Amanda and Hannah, the Evolve X coaches. You guys have heard them before on the show, but we figured that today we would come on and do some live coaching with you guys. We have some really incredible conversations with our clients one-on-one, but oftentimes we actually see patterns between them, and we figured it would be really helpful for those that are clients or maybe you're not clients yet or just listeners of the podcast to be able to gain some insight and knowledge from some of the conversations that we are consistently having. So uh, maybe we'll call this the Coach's Corner or something like that. If you guys have an idea for a uh, consistent coaches podcast, let us know. We'd love to have a cool, catchy title for it. But for today, we're just going to roll with it. So welcome, Amanda and Hannah, to the show. Welcome. Oh, well, you said welcome. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> say what's, what's up. up. Say hi to the listeners. Hello. Hello. All righty. So today we're going to dive straight in. So one common commonality that we see with our clients that are coming in through the Evolve X program, which is our 90 day mindset, lifestyle and nutrition based program, is they come in 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 regards to their nutrition goals. They'll come in and oftentimes they'll say, that, you know, I want to start with a mindful eating approach, right? Because one thing we do is we have an individualized approach for every person. So some people say, I want to do mindful eating. I want to do intuitive eating. And then you guys were sharing with me that pretty soon into the journey, they are worried about lack of progress, staying on track, things like that. So can you kind of uh, talk me through what are, you know, some of the commonalities that you're seeing with these clients who start with a mindful eating and then, you know, why are they wanting to switch? What are they looking to gain from going from that intuitive eating approach to the macro approach? And when do you decide as a coach when it's time for them to make that switch or when they need to stick with a certain approach, you know, for a certain amount of time? So Hannah, if you want to take the lead on this one. Yeah. So, um, I have had this happen actually with a couple clients recently, a handful of them where they are like, okay, well, I don't really want to like track. That sounds like a lot. And I'm starting this journey. I want to make sure I'm doing something that's doable. So I highly advocate for a mindful eating. So it's not, it's all about verbiage. You know, they, everybody argues over their different words that they use, but there's the idea of intuitive eating versus mindful eating. And I like the idea of mindful because you're not just quote unquote listening to your body, but you're also listening to your brain because sometimes our body sends us mixed signals like growling stomach when you're actually thirsty. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, being aware and mindful of those things. So I sometimes clients want to start with that approach. And I think that's great. I love that approach. I think there's a lot of freedom there. Um, and a lot of opportunity for growth and learning. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what we fear is that it's not quite what they're looking for in terms of structure. So when we come into Evolve X, you know, we're ready to go. We're ready to level up. We're all about discipline. We're all about stepping up and being your best self. And so sometimes I think people immediately equate that with, well, my nutrition has to be perfection then too. Mm -hmm. But also remember guys, we don't advocate perfection. Mm -hmm. We advocate excellence. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very individual as to whether someone should make that switch into macros or not. Um, you know, it depends on their history. Do they have a strong history of dieting? Have they tracked macros before and it worked well for them or have they tracked macros before and it was an absolute disaster? Mm -hmm. um, and again, even with that, it gets more individual because why was it a disaster? Mm -hmm. Like what was not going right? And can we work on their mindset and thus make macros work well for them? Mm -hmm. So I think with each client, it's extremely individual. So there's a hard, it's hard to come up with an answer. That's a one size fits all, but I do think there are some things we need to look for. Like tracking macros is a big time commitment. Are you able to or to commit to that? Mm -hmm. Are you able to take the time to weigh out all your food? Are you able to take the time to plan out your days in advance? Because if there's one thing I've learned from tracking macros, I don't care how good at it you are. If you are trying to plan your days on the fly every time, it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to be a fun time. So you need to be prepared. And honestly, in my opinion, that goes for mindful eating as well. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of eating approach you have, meal prep should still be a priority, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say it's something that's definitely extremely individual. And I take it on like a case by case variable. For example, I have a client 
who we started intuitive. She's tracked macros before or 12 for her, but she leads a busy life and she wanted to try more of a mindful approach. I said, okay, let's do it. We did it. She goes, no, I, I have to, I know myself and I've tracked macros before it worked. I'd like to do that. Mm-hmm. So we moved forward. That's totally fine. No problem. We track macros. Um, but on the other hand, I have another client who has started with a mindful eating approach, has stuck with that mindful eating approach, has very much been an advocate of it. Um, knowing that tracking macros is just simply something she's not interested in doing. And that's fine. Um, however, she was worried about lack of progress. We just had this conversation this morning, actually. So this is really good timing. But she was worried about lack of progress. However, what we recognized is what we are instilling is habit. And so that's our focus with our nutrition. It's building really good habits. It's, and some people don't like this, but it's living by nutrition rules, mm. like having things in your life that you're like, I just don't really do that. Like, for example, for myself, one that I always use, I don't really drink my calories. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not going to go get a latte. I'm not going to go get like a sugary something at Starbucks. Um, I'm not going to have a glass of wine every night. I just, I, that's not where I want to budget my calories. That's not where I want to spend my money, you know? So it's all about developing rules that work well for you guidelines per se let's let's less aggressive go with guidelines (laughs) all about developing those and making sure that we are sticking with them and holding ourselves accountable to those and yes she's still going to see progress she's still going to get where she wants to go might be a little bit slower but it's going to happen and it's going to be with an approach that promotes for her mindset with with her food yeah I love that you mentioned that because I think it's so important for people to find the, the approach that is going to let them have longevity in whatever it is that they're doing, right? So for one person, they might be able to have longevity with tracking macros. For another person, they would probably do well on it for a few weeks and then go back to their old habits. So rather than setting them up for failure, we like to set them up for success by meeting them wherever they're at and giving them strategies and approaches to help them with that. So if they are doing intuitive eating and they're really not making that progress, we can still look at that intuitive eating like food diary, so to speak, and say okay these would be some easy changes for you to make in your intuitive process in order for you to start making some more progress in this way Uh, as well as with the mindful eating right it's giving them all of those little like mindset cues and tips so that they can be thinking about things for example you know if they know they're about to hit a heavy hard workout that would be an, an ideal time to maybe have a little bit less fat and a little bit more carbs in order to make sure to fuel your your body properly for that lifting session so there's all these like tips and strategies that we can give no matter you know where you're at in that I'll share a little bit of my personal story so I've been intuitively eating mindful eating in a cut for the last like eight weeks or so and I've noticed that my progress has slowed a little bit and a majority you know the majority reason for that is because my weeks are so different I I'm, I've been traveling every Thursday through Sunday every week pretty much um with my travel and my weeks being different, it's like I'm eating the right foods. I'm intuitively choosing the right things. But with my meals being so different and a lot of the meals having to be out and not actually tracking the food, not actually tracking the calories, I know that my caloric intake is just kind of all over the place throughout the week. And if you look at the weekly average of it all, I'm probably not at enough of a deficit of what I need to be. And the thing about macros is that it's simply just the easiest trackable way to make progress, right? It's the easiest. It's And I say easiest because if you know that you're hitting this caloric intake, it's just easy to be like, well, let's do more carbs here, a little bit less fat here. Let's up your protein intake. It's so easy to make those changes. Whereas when we're doing mindful, intuitive eating, it's a little bit more guesswork involved and a little bit more back and forth. Um, so for me, I'm kind of approaching this point where I'm like, dreading it I'm like I think I need to track macros if I want to make more progress and that's a that's a real thing like clients will have to kind of reach this point where you know some people will forever be happy and reaching their goals doing intuitively eating and they're feeling healthy body mind physically everything And then for those that want to really take it to such, you know, high, high levels with things, they're going to have to really realize, okay, I may at a certain point have to sacrifice what's comfortable, which to me is the mindful intuitive eating for what's a little less uncomfortable, which is having to track the macros in order to get to the next level, so to speak, which I think is really only applicable to people who are looking for, you know, that extreme level, maybe that competitive level or somewhere near that. Um, I find a lot of people can be really happy on an intuitive eating mindful eating approach and feel healthy and whole and good without ever having to do that but it really is just so dependent on each individual yeah and I just to touch base on both of that I think that 
everything is so important. What we touched on is it's so personalized. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for the client to understand like where they're at, right? Because it could even be the opposite where maybe right now they're working through so much like mindset shifts they need to make. Say for example, well, maybe they're working through like, I'm such a perfectionist and this and that. And they're, they're really just learning to like, okay, I really just got to take it easy, slow down a little bit. And maybe for them, that means not tracking every little thing. Mm -hmm. So even though they're not tracking, they can kind of take a step back, but still practice that excellence in regards to, okay, their mindful eating is still taking responsibility and being like, um, and aware of like okay, what foods make them feel good, like the rules or the boundaries or whatnot, and still ease that pressure off them, right? And because that way they're they're still going to be able to um, dive into like their mindset goals mm -hmm. and still their nutrition goals. It just doesn't have to look so extreme. So yes. just like you guys are saying, it really just depends on you know what season they're in, what's their reality, and what fits for their lifestyle. Um, just because like Hannah said, maybe they don't have time to track macros, maybe mm -hmm. them trying to fit in to spend all this time tracking their macros makes them more stress. So now it's like, okay, how can we figure out where you're at? Because whatever your goal is, we can customize to that to make sure you're still, you know, going for excellence in the approach that you take it. Okay, I love that you mentioned that because on one of the last EvolveX mentorship calls, which we do twice a month with the whole EvolveX community, some people are there live and some people watch it on replay, um, but we had one client that was sharing how it was just really difficult for her because in this season, she is, like you mentioned, she's going through a lot of mindset shifts. She's really working heavily in the EvolveX program. She's also going to therapy. She's also addressing just so many difficult things in life that, you know, she kind of had this like this guilt because she felt like she wasn't being excellent because she was having to take like mental health days and she was having to take more rest days than normal. And I really helped her to reframe that, to help her understand that given the season that she's in, that is excellence. Some people have this uh, warped mentality that excellence means a push season that excellence means you're in bikini prep that excellence means you're tracking your macros no like excellence is relative to the season that you're in it's you showing up and doing your absolute best and practicing that on a daily basis and your best during a season when you're going through some of the hardest things in life is going to mean recognizing when your body your mind your soul and your spirit need an off day from the gym and need to go for a walk or need to take some time to meditate or need to actually like cancel a meeting and say, you know what, I'm going to have to reschedule this meeting because I'm not okay. And in realizing that that is you practicing excellence because it's you honoring yourself, it's you loving and respecting yourself. So really getting away from this 100% or nothing mentality and readjusting your targets, readjusting your sales to say, this is excellence in the season. And you mentioned something about, you know, perfection. This is something I wanted to really address in this podcast as well. I think for whatever reason, clients, uh, even just people in general, like on social media, they have this standard of perfection for themselves that they can't mess up in anything that they do, right? And I think one thing that's really beautiful about our program and also our approach just as coaches is we really believe in truth spoken in love and also in giving grace. And a lot of people have never had the experience of accepting what grace really looks like, right? They show up and they're embarrassed that they messed up. They almost don't want to share with their coach that they had a bad weekend or that they screwed up again right and our program is not here to make you abide by this perfect standard or else you fail it's actually the program that's here to help you walk through the moments of failure so I want to hear from you guys um maybe just like when a client has shared with you that they've had a really difficult weekend how do you approach sharing the truth in love holding them accountable helping them to not be in victim mode and just kind of like brush it off. But how do you actually like help keep them accountable while also extending grace to them? And how has that impacted the longevity of them in them reaching their goals? Yeah, I think that's so important. Um, I think, well, first, I think a lot of giving your grace, giving grace to yourself is honoring where you're at and just instant forgiveness. And I think the first step to admitting it to yourself before you even admit it to like us as your coaches 
is a huge step is, you know, because you're not, you're no longer just trying to ignore it or numb it out, which we tend to do, but you're really addressing it. And that in itself should show you, okay, I am ready to move past this. I'm ready to, to reframe everything and reevaluate how I can, how I can um, readdress these goals or whatnot. So I think when clients are having a bad day or a bad week, um, I think the first thing to acknowledge is to forgive yourself, but then also let's be aware of where is that coming from, right? Because again, maybe we were setting too much goals that we're chasing that perfection and we're chasing that just to feel achieve. So a lot of times with some of the clients I have now, it's like, okay, well, what are we really working on? Can we scale back these like daily to do things from like 10 to like three and really just ask yourself, like, are all 10 of those things really serving you? No, you're actually stressing yourself just to check them off your list which we tend to do. I know I've been guilty of that, right? But when we really scale back and say, okay, what am I really working on? What is it that I really need? Mm -hmm. It's almost, and kind of going back to that push, there's a lot of push to scale back, right? So it true. Is so, and I know from like a competitor standpoint, it is so hard to take rest days. It is so hard to like just be still and have like a moment, right? So if you need to reframe reframe that reframe it to make you feel like yes that is a push it looks different but it's a thousand percent a push so um I guess where I'm going with that is just really ask yourself like where can you I guess scale back to give more energy to those lesser things right because now instead of having 10 things on your list you maybe have three to five that you're really actually intentional and you're actually like okay I actually want to do this because I know it's more towards you know uh, my goals or whatnot rather than like oh god I gotta get through all this and I think that tends that a lot of times takes pressure off the client and they're like okay I actually don't feel like I, just like you said, like, I don't feel like I have to do all these things just to feel achieved mm -hmm. if I have to just do one or two things, but really go for it and really be um, intentional about it. I think that that definitely takes that pressure off and they're like ready and like wanting to, to try again. I think that's a really important uh, point to make. And one tangible way that we practice that in the Evolve X program is with our daily check-in, right? There's a daily check-in, which is like a daily journal entry. And in that, there's a list called daily excellence. And there's a reason why it's only two things, two or three things max, right? And it's because everybody likes to create this never ending to do list, which we all know just stresses us out. And honestly, it's never ending. Like the, those to do lists could go on for forever and ever. So this is the opportunity where people can say, okay, if everything else went wrong today, but I did these two things, what are these two things that would make me feel really accomplished? Like I've been successful within the day, right? And the goal here is to really create some positive momentum and to really count these wins so that after you write these things down, like go and accomplish them as soon as possible. And even if the day, the rest of it all goes to hell, just look back at that list and say, okay, I did the two things that were the most important things. And I think, you know, one of the intentions behind helping people create this list that's only two, possibly three things, is to narrow it down and show them that they actually don't have to accomplish the entire world every single day in order to be successful in life. If you will accomplish two very important things every single day, you can make sustainable and long-term progress towards your goals. And I think, you know, it's really cool that we give them that opportunity to, you know, really focus on that. And also I wanted to bring something that's been coming up a lot with my clients. I think even with us too, is also finding time for like a little fun, a little yes. joy, because sometimes that's literally all you need to get past these like stagnant energies or this pressure that you're like, uh, like for me, I know I'm like, I'm like, ah, I got to get this and this, or like, how can I, you know, tap into this and da, da, da. And maybe literally what you need to get those creative juices flowing, or maybe it's just those motivational juices or whatever it, it is that you need. It's literally just thinking outside the box. And maybe you're, I know for some of my clients, their goal for the week is to find something fun mm -hmm. so that they can get that like feeling again. And that in turn will turn into like, okay, well, I have these like, happy, creative feelings again, how do I want to implement these into like chasing my goals? So I think that's a really important thing too. 
Yeah. Go ahead, Hannah. I was gonna say, I think just like piggy, piggyback off Amanda's idea of that, the list and the overwhelm. I think it's really easy to get in that. And I use this analogy with my clients all the time. The idea of, you know, if you to say, well, I ate a cookie, so to hell with today, like game on. And is the same thing as like getting a flat tire and then slashing the rest of your tires because well, one's flat, the car can't drive. So might as well ruin the rest of them. Why the heck not? That's um, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, I use it all the time. I love it. I think if we create that list of 10 big things that we have to get every day done every day to be successful, then we have that sense of overwhelm. And we're gonna be like, well, I can't do that. I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to practice my excellence, quote unquote, because I didn't get this done. And so instead, everything just goes to hell. We're just, we do the opposite of everything we're supposed to do. Versus if we just have a list of two or three things that's digestible, that's doable, that's in your face, it's you, no matter how your day is going, you can do two things, mm-hmm. you know, typically do things. Granted, we all have scenarios, but you know, there are exceptions, but you can do two things. Yeah. So I think having a list that's approachable. Mm-hmm. And again, it's all about consistency. If you consistently do things over and over, you will get where you want to go um, every time. <laughs> so it's don't make the list absurd. Don't expect absolute perfection because that's when you get all four flat tires. I totally agree. And that kind of goes into the next thing I wanted to bring up was the mentality that we have throughout the Evolve X coaching program, which is every day is day one, right? And the point for helping people realize this is that you truly are only gifted one day at a time. And sometimes if you look at the whole month in advance, the whole you know year in advance, the whole week in advance, even it's like that can be so overwhelming and sometimes get people really discouraged because they feel like I'm barely making any progress. I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. I have so much further to go, right? All these thoughts start circulating inside of your head and it can be really discouraging. So really focusing on, okay, today is the day that if I'm able to be successful in all of my goals, right? I get my workout in, I'm eating healthy food, I'm getting my water in, I'm doing my two things for my excellence list. As long as I do that today, I will be successful. I know that that's where I end up at the end of the road. So really focusing on this day one mentality. And also I think something that helps with this um, or something that this helps with is when you do have those moments of messing up, right, Hannah? So it's like they slashed one tire and before you slash all the others, like take a pause and think for a second and say, okay, I still have the rest of today. So maybe just now I messed up. I went off my diet because I didn't have my food prepared or whatever it is, but don't eat like crap the rest of the day. Say, okay, let me eat the next healthy meal that I need to make. Let me take my greens. Let me put some BCAAs in my water and make sure I get all my water in today, right? Like having those actionable things that you do right now today and take away the option to start tomorrow, especially if it's something like the weekend. Guys, the weekend will set your weeks up for success. I mean, I, I I think I shared with you guys actually on one of our weekly calls how a few weekends ago, I didn't even necessarily do anything like off track. I just had like the laziest rest day in the sense that like I just slept, my meals were not timed well, I didn't get all my water in, right? It's not like I went off the, the rocker by any means. I also didn't foam roll, I didn't do cardio. And it's like the way that I started my Monday was so horrible that I was like, I will never not be dedicated to my weekend regimen ever again because I was I was exhausted. I could feel that I was dehydrated. My body was so tight and extra sore when it shouldn't have been because I didn't actually train the day before. Right. So it just goes to show you how what you do the day before it really sets you up for success or not on the following day. So, you know, how do you guys work with clients when they've kind of shared with you that like, well, I got off track and then the whole weekend was just horrible. You know, how do you guys help your clients in regards to like the weekend approach? I think it's really good to look at it. Like you said, what's the next best thing I can do? And I actually had a conversation with a client this morning who, um, she's like, I just had a rough weekend. She's like, I got back from traveling for work. I uh, had all this stuff going on. She's like, I didn't track. And my, I was, I didn't even want to check in with you today because Saturday and Sunday were just not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And first off that happens in order to learn, we have to make mistakes. We have to fail. We have to fall. That's how we learn to get better. So sometimes when something like that happens, like Emily's lazy day, for example, she realized she's not going to do that again. Nope. <laughs> so for this client, what I ask is take a look, look back over the week the weekend, realize, okay, well, what led into me not doing what I was supposed to? Why did I make the choices I made instead of the ones I was wanting to make in the long term? And then learn from that. Take note, what did I do that set me up to not be on track? And then try to avoid or prepare yourself better moving forward. Use that as an opportunity to learn. And then also let it the 
go. Can I say that? Before? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say it Let again. It <laughs> Let it go. Yeah, <laughs> Let it go. Um, all you need to, you need to come into Monday fresh. Um, I don't care how terrible Saturday was come into Sunday fresh. I don't care how awful Wednesday was come into Thursday fresh. Let it go. Do not let that eat at you. Do not carry that negative energy into the next weekday moment hour with you because all it's going to do is continue to spread and grow and we don't need it. Nope. So let it go. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. If you have to turn on Taylor Swift and shake it off, (laughs) like do whatever you have to do. Like honestly, guys, sometimes it it helps to like turn the song on and like physically just like be like, I'm shaking all of this energy off, all of this bad energy, negative mindset, go away. You're not welcome here. I don't want you here. Put on one of your favorite songs and like, just dance it out, have a little moment. It's crazy how even like a little three minute song can change your mindset and change the pace of the day that you have. So having these little like practices or these go to's of things that you do when you know you're in a crap mood will really help. Even if the crap mood is a result of some of the choices that you made, right? You just got to shake it off. You got to let it go and decide that today's a new day, a new opportunity. And now you can set the pace for, you know, what you do next. Yeah. And to go with that too, with day one mentality, it's every choice, right? You have every moment is a new opportunity. It's a new choice. So even if, you know, you're reflecting on like your weekend or say you're in the weekend and you made a bad choice, what can you do right now? Maybe it's get caught up in your water or maybe it's like, okay, the next meal, I'm going to have this or the next opportunity, I'm going to go for a walk or whatever it is. Just remembering that you literally have so many chances to make that next choice. So it's not just about, okay, what can I get done today to, you know, prepare myself, but it's like, what can I do right now to get to the next moment of choice, to get to the next moment of choice, to continue those good habits and those good choices. I love that you mentioned that because I think being present is really powerful and we're always trying to help people come back to presence, right? So even like what you're mentioning, it's like not even focusing on the rest of the day, but just saying, where am I right now in this moment and what's the decision I need to make right now? And I think that helps people to step away from overwhelm as well, right? Because whether it's overwhelm from work or it's overwhelm from how am I going to do this the rest of the day or the rest of the week, whatever it is, it's just bringing them super hyper-focused into the moment and empowering them that, hey, you don't have to make all those decisions right now. You don't have to know how this is going to work out. You just need to decide what kind of vegetables to have with your lean protein at the moment, right? Like just make that decision, decide how you're going to cook it and eat those. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so you mentioned earlier, Amanda, about how sometimes the answer is not more strategy or more lists or things like that, but how it's actually to have more fun. And we definitely have spoken about that together. We've all had homework before where we're like, we all need to go have some fun. Like we need to go laugh. We need to go hang with some friends. Um, because that time can often fill you up in a way where working never could. And I think, you know, both are really needed. So Amanda, what is a way that you like to kind of just refill yourself? What's a, what's something that's a lot of fun for you that always fills back up your cup? (laughs) So you guys are going to laugh because this is just recently, but gardening, yes, but lately it's literally, (laughs) I've been hanging out with my chickens. Oh my God, it's so cute. So <laughs> I like dig up, I basically turn the dirt and they like fight for like worms and like potato bugs and it makes me laugh and I enjoy <laughs> it and I quite literally do it at one point of every day just to get like a little laugh in. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like it could be anything as hanging out with your chickens or whatever it may be, but even if it's just for a couple minutes, like embrace it because mm-hmm. maybe- you know, maybe I don't have a great rest of the day or whatever. Maybe I didn't necessarily take away my problems, but I chose to feel joy in a season of hardship or a season of challenges. I'm still choosing moments. And I think that's what allows me personally and allow other people to be able, and I don't want to say push through because you got to work through it, but you're making intentional choices to to move forward or you know just to feel that joy because I think that's what's kind of what we talked about with nutrition it's like always all in or nothing you can go through a hard time but still have moments of joy you can 
you know, same, same thing. You can be in a great place or whatever and still have bad days. So it's always just about, well, what do you choose to do? So yeah, I'm just hanging out with my chickens. It's wow. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> Hannah, what about you? Honestly, if I could ride roller coasters every day, like if it were normal to have someone have like a roller coaster in their backyard, that's, that's what I would pick. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, now that we're there, what kind of roller coaster but would it be? Anything. I don't care. I'm not picky. Drop tower, wooden roller coaster. Have you been skydiving? No, but I want to. I feel like you would love, I mean, I haven't been, but you just seem like I an know. adrenaline junkie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know, like, places around here that are ran by ex-military. And I'm like, that, that's where I want to go. Oh yeah. I have people that always yeah. tell me to come. I am coming to Virginia, by the way. Yes, you still have to. <laughs> yeah, I am. But if something realistic, that's not, you know, building a roller coaster in my <laughs> Yeah, Hannah, how often do you do it? She's like, this is what I love. How often do you do it? Literally never. Once every three years. <laughs> okay, but okay, this is real though, right? Like when you ask clients, what do you love yeah, to do? Go yeah, and then they're like, yeah, I, I love to do all these things. Okay, when's the last time you did it? They're like, uh, 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 can't remember. Well, yeah. I could easily go like by twice a year because there's one not far away. Okay, Hannah, realistically, what are things you do that you enjoy like on a weekly basis or like more often than once a year? <laughs> Fair. Okay. So this is one. Um, I actually picked this up. I've always been like a cruiser. Like I love to just get in my car and drive. Like no, I, I love to explore and like to check places out. I like to look at new stuff. I just like to drive around. And it really like hit hard in uh, 2020 during like the quarantine time because it was just me and Elsie and the cat. So anytime I can just like go on a drive with Elsie, I love it. We did it actually Friday afternoon. Um, mm -hmm. I just put her in the car. I put on my Spotify. We roll the windows down. She sticks her head. It's a good time, man. We got good vibes. Aww. We even found a really cool new park on the water. Like we drove around for like an hour and we just had a good time. That is so sweet. I love that so much. I love to go for a walk. I know that's really simple, but I just love being <clears> in nature and I love finding different places to go and walk. No, obviously mm -hmm. when I was in California, it was, the scenery was just so unreal and beautiful, right? Like by the ocean and the mountains, but I don't allow that to be an excuse to not find somewhere pretty to walk. Cause I think you can find mm -hmm. beauty, especially in nature, wherever you go. Um, so here, like it's definitely been more challenging to find like more beautiful spots, but I think as long as you're looking for it, you'll find it. So I look mm -hmm. for the beauty and even for example, I was at this park and it literally is like this, this like swampy looking lake with like just a bunch <laughs> of green trees. And I had to be like, Oh, look at this little lake, <laughs> you know, like, let me appreciate the little critters that are living inside of it. Let me find gratitude for how green everything is. Right. So maybe it's not these like magical looking mountains or this magical ocean next to me, but if something's like extra green today, I'm just uh, in gratitude or I appreciate that. And I found that for me being in nature and expressing gratitude, like choosing gratitude really helps me. Um, and Amanda, I love what you mentioned about how, you know, you can be going through a really rough season and still choose these moments of like happiness or these moments that, that are really good too. Uh, because, you know, I definitely have, you know, gone through some really difficult things and it's the way that it looks in the day is maybe in the morning, like breaking down, right. And having a really difficult moment. But I think oftentimes people will stay there and they will say today's a bad day and they label the day based off of a moment. And then they don't even realize that they further perpetuate that story inside of their head because now that's what they're looking for. And they almost want it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then the rest of the day truly is bad and everything's hard and everything's negative. Whereas you can feel what you're feeling. You can have that hard or I wouldn't even say bad, just that hard and struggling moment. Right. You can feel that. You can let the tears, you know, finish. <laughs> you can do what you need to do. Take a few breaths and then say, okay, well, why don't I choose another moment now? You know, why don't I turn on a song? Why don't I call a friend and check in on them and maybe not talk about me because maybe it's not what I need to do right now, you know, but just all these little intentional actions. And, you know, that's something that we're really adamant about in the program is creating this habit and this pattern of intentional living. So, you know, what is one way that you guys have really helped your clients to kind of reframe their minds in order to be intentional with the way that they live, intentional with maybe their food, their workouts, their mindset? You know, what is what is one way that you guys have kind of helped them do that? I think a lot about the concept of like you create your reality. Mm. 
you, you know, you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond. Like all those concepts that like all rule together to essentially come out to the same message, Mm -hmm. which is your actions and your thoughts generate your life. They really do. So are you creating the life that you want through your actions? So look at your daily action, look at what you're doing. So sitting, you know, sitting down with the client saying, okay, well, you said you want to be the person who prioritizes their health and fitness. You said you want to be the person who looks like they work out. You said you want to be this, you said you want to be this kind of mom, it's whatever, you know? Um, and ask, are your actions reflecting that? And like, you have to be honest with yourself. And sometimes it sucks. Like it's like sucks. Like, cause you know, myself personally being, the last few years, like redesigning my career into a fitness based one and doing all of this. And I have to tell you a few months ago, guys, I was not the person living the fitness lifestyle. Like I was not. Um, and I just had to get honest with myself finally and say, okay, well, is this, I want to be this person. I still do. I still love and admire for that lifestyle. And that's what I want to do. Am I, am I truly acting and thinking like that right now? No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. So what needs to change? Where do I need to put more effort? What do I need to shift? What thought processes am I having right now? And how do I need to rewire those into something more positive or more constructive towards where I want to go and what I want to do? And really break that down, guys, because the mind is very habitual. The mind loves repeats. It loves circles. It loves patterns. So it's going to keep telling you whatever you've been telling yourself lately. And it's going to latch and it's going to cycle through it over and over and over and reinforce and reinforce and reinforce. So you need to make sure that you're interrupting that cycle or you're adding new thoughts or whatever it is that you're doing or that you want to be, make sure that you are providing that opportunity for yourself, not only through actions, but also in your head. What are you thinking about? What are you telling yourself? Um, how are you tying that into your identity and who you are as a human being? Hannah, that's so good. <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah. And I th- go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I think that that was so good, Hannah. And I think it's so important to ask yourself that question. And it's okay to say no. I think <laughs> saying no is your start is your chance to start and just just like Hannah said is just to really reflect and say okay I am not actually doing this now how can I instead of trying to pretend oh yeah I kind of am doing it or like yeah yeah I'm good you're never going to progress because you're making up the story in your head that you're not actually doing it so when I think it's totally okay to say no actually I am not showing up at all Mm -hmm. and instead of being guilty just being like no, like I am going to be brave enough to say, no, I'm not. But now how can I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. It's okay to say, well, I'm not doing it because I don't want to. It's okay to change your mind. That's mm-hmm. so oh, good exactly. and so mm-hmm. real. And and so I think with that thought process, sometimes people set these goals and they don't realize that these goals never really came from them in the first place. It came from Mm -hmm. what other people thought they should do, what social media was telling them to do, what was trendy or seemed cool. You know, they want to try on things that other people are trying, but when they really get to know themselves and really understand like what's inside of them, then they start to realize that that's never something they truly wanted. And yeah, I'd like to echo that. It's okay to say no. It's okay to change your mind. And it's okay to say, actually, this isn't aligned with who I am and where I want to go. So let me just make a different decision. Let me switch directions and find something that is aligned with myself, knowing full well that the whole point of life is to grow and to evolve. So don't ever feel shame in deciding to go a different direction. Don't ever feel shame in not being who you were, you know, maybe for one season you were going down a certain path and the new season that you're in has you at a completely different path it doesn't mean that you may never go back to that season or that path but for whatever reason life needs you to be in a different season so the sooner that you can get your heart mind and body aligned with your external goals that you set for yourself the sooner you'll start to feel that flow because when you are in alignment things will flow you'll know like you will feel so good even in the hard moments you'll know that like this is where I'm meant to be and you'll be able to trust the process a little bit more sometimes I see clients that are just so stuck in this resistance and what's cool is once you start to actually like dive into like okay why is there resistance here then sometimes you're able to uncover we're we're misaligned in our goals and we actually need to kind of just reset our targets a little bit and sometimes fully change direction as well Mm -hmm. and that's what I love about the Evolved X community is that I think everyone is on that page of being comfortable with changing, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think sometimes too, especially when we look in the world of social media, it's almost like we're timid to share this new part of us because Mm -hmm. people know us from this other identity or, you know what I mean? So it feels like 
weird or it feels like, oh, how do I share this new higher self of me? But that's what we have this community for is that we're, you know what I mean? Like everyone can kind of share like, okay, this is maybe who I was, but this is who I am striving to be or who I am now and finding so much beauty in that rather than like, how do I hide that on social media or how do I, because it can be uncomfortable trying to show this new place uh, of you, especially if your audience or whatever is used to a different way. So I think just having that community aspect of that is also so beautiful. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think, you know, one thing that people have to be is they have to be willing to suck at the new thing, right? Oftentimes when you start something new, you're not going to be great at it from the get go, right? So whether it's something as simple as like, oh, I'm just now starting macros for the first time, don't count yourself out and say that you can't do it simply because it's hard. You know, if you start weightlifting for the first time or doing a certain cardio or maybe it's a different sport, whatever it is, chances are you're going to have to allow yourself that time to really learn it and make that progress and b- become efficient in it. Um, but kind of going back to the the macros part, because we it was something I didn't touch on earlier that I wanted to, you know, because we talk a lot about like macros being a lot. But the truth is macros can also be really simple if you have the right strategies to it. So can we each share just some of our tips for making counting macros simple, like the simple, easy steps to creating and, and tracking your macros? Yeah, I actually like to share about this. I know I haven't tracked macros in years, but something that even allowed me to intuitively eat is tracking smart, right? Because I think we all go through this, like tracking macros is you can fit whatever you want, right? (laughs) But um, at the end of the day, it's still your responsibility and it should be your responsibility with macros to figure out, well, what works best for you, right? Mm -hmm. And with that, once you kind of know like, okay, these are kind of where your calories are or your macros are at, you almost essentially start eating the same things, not because, okay, this is my meal plan and I have to eat it, but because you're understanding these foods are actually really serving me. It's giving me a lot of energy. It's making me feel good. It's, you know, my digestion is great, whatever. So then it's like that mindset shift that you're like, these are actually making me feel good and it's serving me. So, you know, I want to eat these foods. Right. And I think for me, that was, definitely a game changer when I was tracking macros because I wasn't it was essentially like I had the same thing like once I finally figured it out (laughs) yeah I was eating the same things every day but I had flexibility change if I wanted to Mm -hmm. knowing it wouldn't really for the most part not be anything dramatic because at this point my my goal was to feel good inside and so I knew that introducing dramatic things at all at one time wasn't smart for me and my goals, right? If my goal was health and to feel good. Um, so I think taking, if you're, especially if you're new to macros, taking the pressure off of like, what, so, what is something new I can try every day? Cause that used to be me literally every day for an hour, I would try oh to figure gosh. out this, this, la, 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 la. And then it was like, okay, no, this is actually what's making me feel good. And then if obviously on your goals, you can decrease or increase or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, But I think when you start to focus macros on like what's going to make you feel good, that'll make it easier for you when you're not spending all this time in the app or whatever. I think that's great. Hannah, what about you? So mine is going to be to spend a little bit of time. I think that you do need to play. I think that you do need to eventually you'll get to that point where you do find the foods that feel good and you do find the foods that like make you feel great. And I think again, that's vital. Prioritize your health over like, can I squeeze three pop tarts down my <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh wait, hold but, on, yeah. hold on. I got to tell the story. I remember oh, the first week that I ever tracked macros, like ever in my life. I literally like almost <laughs> cried because I couldn't fit a pop tart in, and I was like, I thought that was map- macros. Like I literally, (laughs) I literally cried because here's the thing. I was like post-show, I was tracking macros for the first time and I was like, perfect. Like I'll eat pop tarts (laughs) because that's all you see on social media. Right. And I Mm -hmm. literally like was like, what is the point of this? And I can't eat pop tarts. (laughs) Oh man. That's macros. what called like, if it fits your macros. Yes, yes, yes. I was like, perfect. I'm doing IFYM. I'm going to eat all these pop tarts just like the other girls do before the gym. And I like, no, this is what happened. I put one pop tart in and then I like couldn't eat the rest of the day. And I'm like... (laughs) It was amazing. Anyways, continue. Uh, But in doing that, you learn what works and what doesn't, right? So we have to play in the app and you do have to make mistakes. You do have to mess up and that's okay. 
but to play in there, does, that's how you learn about the food, the quality or the quantity of what like macronutrients are in your food is you pay attention to what you're doing and to what you're eating. Yeah. Um, but that does get easier. As time goes on, you spend a lot less time in the app. You spend a lot less time stressing when you identify what foods work well for you. It makes your life so much easier. So just like Amanda said, it gets way better. Um, but yeah, to like play. Yeah. And with that comes planning. Plan ahead. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you the first time I started tracking macros or even like you know, in my off seasons when I was like, Oh, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for so long. Um, to just wing it and enter as you go. It sucks every time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 100%. At the end of the day, you're left with like 50 protein, two fat and 12 carbs. And what, what kind of meal is that? Not um, when I went, no, I mean, I can think of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, let's, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> a lot of egg whites, a lot of egg whites, oh, probably <laughs> rice cake. <laughs> I'd probably leave the too fat. Um, Okay, so, and I have some practical tips too. So one thing that I would definitely mention is I really got into a habit of the night before, I would sit down the night before and plan out all my food for the following day so that when I woke up, I would already know exactly what I'm eating for that day. And I told myself, you don't have to commit to eating this every day, but just for tomorrow, you need to stick to your meal plan because you really need to hit your macros. And then at the end of the day, that next day, I would say, okay, did I like what I ate? Did I feel good? And do I want to do that again tomorrow? And maybe sometimes I'm like, no, I actually kind of want like rice cakes and a peanut butter for a snack tomorrow. And I'd get all excited and I would readjust and have that for my meal tomorrow. Uh, another, so, so yeah, every single day I would never go into the day without everything already tracked. And then another thing that I would do is, especially in prep, I would plan my last meal first. Like I always wanted to have dessert at the end of the night. So I would first put in my protein shake, which is like level one ice cream with almond milk and ice. And sometimes that was it. Other times I would add little like toppings like fruit or whatever. Um, so that I knew all day long that I was dieting or, you know, eating my meals that I had that to look forward to. Cause it was like one of my favorite things. Maybe another time it was like a mug cake. Right. So I'd plug that in first. And then from there, then I would plug in, okay, well, what do I like to eat? Just keep it really simple. Like what do I enjoy eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Maybe breakfast. It's like, I love eating eggs and oats. So you kind of just start by typing in what a portion size might look like, right? Like maybe it's like three egg whites and half cup of oats. And then you do the same for lunch and dinner with, you know, different meats and vegetables and things. And you kind of just readjust the portion sizes from there. So don't feel like you have to know exactly what portion size you're going to eat. Just put the foods in there. And then once you kind of see where you're at, you can readjust your targets. And and maybe at first you thought you were going to have three fourths of a cup of rice at a meal, but you realize it's a little bit too much. So you can just kind of take that from three fourths to one one half. Uh, and then kind of readjust from there. But yeah, any time that I would work with a client who's like, I'm really struggling, struggling to hit my macros. I'm just always left with these weird numbers at the end of the night. My number one question is, did you plan it ahead of time? Because it's literally fail proof. It is fail proof. Mm-hmm. If you will take time and plan it ahead of time and stick to it throughout the day, you will hit your macros 100% of the time. It really mm-hmm. just comes down to preparation and planning. So, you know, as much as, you know, macros can kind of seem like a lot, it really does become very simple. And it is a really easy way to make sure that you can hit your targets and, and make adjustments if you need to make those adjustments. So, and I think it's important. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You finish. Okay. Okay. I I think it's important for people to track macros for a period of time. Maybe not every single person, depending on what your dieting history and food relationship is. But for a lot of people, it can be really empowering because let's say you decide, okay, for 12 weeks, I'm going to learn this tracking macro thing. I'm really going to commit to it uh, and I'm going to make progress in this way. You will learn so much about your food. You will learn so much about nutrition and you will be more empowered to make decisions that are more in alignment with your goals and the lifestyle that you want to live, even if you never track macros again. So just kind of wanted to put that out there. Yeah. And I think, um, I think too, it's important to um, perspective for anything too, right? So even if you aren't tracking macros, plan ahead and prepare, Yes, you know, like for me, I don't track macros, but I'm still prepared or planning like what I'm going to eat. Like I kind of always know like, what am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to have for lunch? And I buy things to make sure I have those things available. Right. Because that's keeping yourself responsible or practicing excellence is to plan ahead. You know what I mean? Um, so even though you're not 
checking your app or whatever, you're still planning ahead to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success, that you're making sure that you're eating foods that feel good for you. And even when you're not tracking, you can still take into account with em- with everything that Emily said, like, is this actually making me feel good? Mm-hmm. Do I want to eat this again tomorrow? Whatever. So I think that's, de- and I definitely want to touch base on that because I do have a handful of clients that aren't tracking macros, but that's definitely a way to keep yourself accountable, to plan ahead and be kind of, you know, I kind of always know like what I'm going to eat in my mm-hmm. head because those make me feel good. And then say, you know, come dinner time, I planned on like rice and salmon, whatever. And then I'm like, I don't really feel like sam- or salmon. They want something else. It's totally fine. Right. But you're still, you're still very aware of like what your body needs and just, um, you know, um, achieving that. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to make because regardless of what strategy you personally are using, it's all about creating healthy nutritional habits. So Mm -hmm. like you mentioned, I'm not tracking macros. I haven't tracked macros in years, but I still meal prep because if I don't have meals prepped, if I don't have protein prepped, I am just running throughout the day. I'm not getting my meals in. It's, It's not a healthy nutritional habit for me to not have that food prepared. So I think really focusing your mindset on healthy nutritional habits and creating those patterns and habits will help you regardless if you're intuitively eating, intermittent fasting, tracking macros, no matter what it is. Yeah, but 100%, I do want to touch base on tracking macros is great and is what helps you understand you know what I mean Mm -hmm. I would not be able to I mean personally would not been able to intuitively eat without tracking macros Mm -hmm. because it's like for so long I knew kind of how much protein I needed so now if I'm like low in energy I'm like oh shit like I haven't had any protein I know even though I don't know the exact number I know what it kind of looks like in my day yeah absolutely Hannah do you remember what you were going to say a few minutes ago yes so I'm always surprised how many clients don't know this um, so if you use my fitness pal to track, uh, you know, enter your food, if you're watching this on video, okay, well, you know, pretend you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see the individual macros of each food that you're doing, as far as how many carbs, fat, and protein are in quail eggs, you just turn your phone sideways and it'll Fancy. list them. I'm always surprised how many people don't know that. Yeah. So it'll list them out like carbs, fat, protein, and sodium, fiber, et cetera. But it'll like break it down by food. Look at that. Learn. Soak it up. I love that. So for those that are listening and didn't see, if you just turn your phone from vertical to horizontal, uh, you'll be able to see the individual macros in each meal, each food item in my fitness pal. Amanda looks so confused. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't oh. know that? I thought you just clicked on it. No, you just turn your phone sideways and it'll list them. Yeah. You didn't know this? That's so funny. But it's like the same thing if you click on it, no? Or is it completely different? No, I think it'll show you if you click on it. Yeah, but it'll show you like your whole meal, how many carbs, fat, protein are in like your whole meal and like all kinds of stuff. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We're learning together. Now I'm curious. Okay, so I want to give them some actionable things that they can do. There are two things that are coming to mind. um, Actually, three things that are coming to mind. So maybe we can each take one. Um, I was thinking nu- a nutritional takeaway, a uh, mindset, limiting belief, thoughts takeaway, and then a, what was the third one? Oh, the weekend thing. Earlier we were talking about the weekends and like getting off track and like what to do. So Hannah, do you want to take it away with some actionable things they can do if they realize that right now they're in the mindset where it's all these like negative things circling around and they're about to like start their day? What can they do to, like you said, start to rewire their brain into to insert, like you mentioned, some positive things into the habitual cycle? Yes, absolutely. I can. So I've actually read a book that talked about interrupting your thought process um, processes. Um, I, that's one of my favorite books in the world and I can't remember the title of it, but if I can, if I remember it, can I give it to you to put in the show notes? Because it's my life. Okay. Um, So basically what they say to do, what I think is super helpful. Also, Elsie's rolling around on the floor snorting. So sorry if you hear that in the background, Um, is to take that thought. Okay. Look at it and then ask yourself, is it true? whatever the thought is, um, I suck at tracking macros because you messed up all weekend. Or is that true? Do you really, really super duper suck at tracking macros? And you ask yourself, well, no, because like Monday through Friday, I was perfect. Like I hit all my numbers like within ranges and I did really well. So that's actually not true. That's a false thought. Um, and it's a lie. You're telling yourself a lie because it's attached to a very strong emotion. So identify the emotion. What's the emotion? Well, the emotion is disappointment, guilt, whatever. 
It's like, okay, well, I'm disappointed and I feel guilty that I didn't stick with what I know I'm capable of doing throughout the weekend. So instead, I'm going to learn. So I want you to write down a learning point. What did you learn from that mistake that you made or these negative thoughts that you have? What do you need to learn from it? And then let it the fuck go and go with whatever you're in. Replace it with something new. So I suck at tracking macros. No, you don't because you were, you were really good Monday through Friday, but Saturday, Sunday, you had a lot of distractions, a lot of opportunities, and you messed up. So you don't suck at tracking macros. Let's replace that with an empowering statement of, I'm good at tracking macros when I am focused. Mm, that's so good. I love so that good. so much. And then anytime you have that, oh, I suck, I suck. No, no, tell yourself no and replace it with your new thought. Wow. And just, it's going to take practice because that, that old negative belief, it's going to keep cycling back up. And every time, shh, just throw it out the window and replace it with your new one. Thank you. I love that so much. But mm-hmm. um, Amanda, could you give some actionable uh, tips to people that, are getting off track and they really beat themselves up when they get off track. Um, could you give them maybe like a, okay, when this happens, try this. Mm. Yeah, I think so. When clients say mess up or whatever, how can they get back? It's again with the mindset, but also it's really maybe even just taking action and saying like writing down or in your journal or however you want to do it and say, okay, when this happens, these are the things I can kind of go to, right? If it's through your, uh, if it's meeting with nutrition, maybe it's, you know, you got off track. So maybe next time it's like, well, what can I do next? Okay, the next meal I can do that. So it's kind of almost like making a list or um, yeah, just different like action steps that will help you get to that better mindset. Or, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily an action step, but maybe it's like an action step of how you can be present to, forgive yourself to be able to move on, right? Because if we stay in this state of like guilt or shame, we're never going to be able to take your step forward. So maybe at that moment, it's not, okay, well, what action can I take now? But what action can I take to come back to the present to be able to move forward? And that looks different for everyone, right? Maybe um, it's moments of stillness. Maybe it's, okay, I got to take a break from work. I've got to go on a walk or whatever it is. Um, Figure out what that looks like for you because that can look like different for everyone. But basically, like, how can you get your, your mindset back to this place of like, okay, no more guilt, no more shame. It already happened. How do we move on? Yeah, I love that you mentioned that because I think your energy behind what you do actually further perpetuates whatever the energy is, right? So if it's guilt and it's shame, you're actually going to go back into that cycle. Whereas like you're saying, if you take this moment to come from a place of love, from a place of I love myself enough to choose better for myself, then that love is going to be your driving force and your motivating force. And I believe that that will be your result as well. And then lastly, I'd like to add just with a a nutritional tip, I would love for everybody listening to seek to create more self-awareness around their nutrition. So no matter where you're at, say, okay, how can I be more self-aware with my nutrition? Do I need to make some changes currently? Am I really not doing the best that I could do with my nutrition. Maybe it's simple things like, okay, I need to start creating a habit of meal prep. Maybe it's something as simple as, okay, I've been eating cookies every single night and really that's excessive. And maybe I'll just have cookies on Wednesdays when my girls come over, right? Maybe it's just like these small lifestyle different, you know, um, patterns that you're going to start to create for yourself, but then also look at, okay, if I'm not where I want to be, am I choosing comfortability over choosing what's actually going to get me to my goal, right? And if that's the case, then making that decision to actually align yourself, align your thoughts, your actions, your intentionality with your goals. Because sometimes that misalignment can keep you stuck in a phase that you know you're capable of more, but you're staying in that phase because you are not being fully honest with yourself about what you are capable of and you're not truly aligned. So seek to create more self-awareness around your nutrition. It could even just look like you creating a food diary over the next couple of days and having a real honest look at what you're actually intaking. Oftentimes people, they don't have a very good honest inventory, not because they're trying to be dishonest, but because if you're not really having a clear picture of of what it is that you're choosing to put inside of your body, then sometimes you're like, well, I, I eat pretty healthy, but it's different when you have to write it down step by step, meal by meal, then you can really look at it and say, 
oh, I'm eating mainly carbs all day long. You know, I'm barely eating protein or I don't even have healthy fats in my diet or, you know, you really get that real look at it. So be honest with yourself, take personal responsibility and decide how you can make even just a small change to your nutrition today. And I mentioned nutrition because, you know, just like the training, the mindset, it's so important like the way that you fuel your body is truly going to impact how you feel and show up. It'll impact your brain energy. It impacts your emotions. It impacts your gut health. Like it really is so important. And that's why I think we take time to, to really harp on it. So I hope that today's podcast was helpful to you guys. Thank you, Amanda and Hannah, both for being on today. Thanks for having me. Of course. And for everyone listening, we would love to make this a consistent part of the podcast. So we would love to even just do a Q&A. So make sure to follow the Evolve X Instagram page. It's E-V-L-V dot X on Instagram. Make sure to follow that. We will ask for questions and we will do another coaches podcast soon. If you are somebody that is looking to work with us through the Evolve X program, then definitely check out the link below for the application to the Evolve X program, as well as a second link, which will bring you to all of the information that you need to know about Evolve X and what it all entails. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Evolve X page or any one of us individually. And we would love to answer all of your questions, whether that's through a DM, a voice note, or hopping on the phone to kind of talk things through with you guys. We would love to help you reach your best and to evolve in all areas of life. So thank you guys for listening. I will see you in another episode of Evolve with Emily soon. Bye guys.